Hello, my name is Justin Noel. I'm an authorized CUTE instructor from ICS. This video is actually a very small sample of a much larger training course called CUTE Essentials. In this video, I'd like to give you some key insights on how to use CUTE in your everyday projects and also demonstrate the type of in-depth training available from the full multi-day CUTE Essentials training course. In this video, we're going to be talking about translations for developers. How to take an application that was written, let's say with all of the strings inside it, has English, and converting that into something where the user can run and at runtime switch the language to say French, German, or even Arabic. Luckily, Qt comes with a lot of tools and a lot of design features that's going to make this very easy. This is actually a condensed version of a much larger section in the actual Qt Essentials course. So the entirety of internationalization would take, say, an hour. This is going to be the 10-minute condensed version. However, this will give you uh, enough tips and insight to design your application from the ground up with internationalization in mind. So internationalization, or I-18N, probably one of my favorite acronyms because internationalization is I, 18 characters, and an N, is the concept of actually switching the language of your program. So we're going to take the strings that were in English and replace them with similar strings except in, say, French. Localization, otherwise known as L10N, is the process of adapting your entire application to the uh, cultural and workflow sensibilities of the area of the world that your application targets. That is a whole other topic. We're going to stick with simple translations for the rest of this uh, section. Like I said, Qt has a number of fundamental tools and design principles that is going to make this very easy for you to use. First off is that from the ground up, from its inception, Qt has been entirely Unicode compatible. It means internally all the string data is stored in Unicode. There's not a lot of conversions that go on. There is a function called TR. And anywhere that you have the scope of Q object, you can wrap your user visible strings in TR. And those are the strings that you want to have translated by your translator. Now internally, Qt supports printing of dates and numbers with a locale specific format. So if you're in a European locale, your dates will be formatted such that they are day, month, year. If you're in the United States, you get month, day, year. So Qt comes with a tool called Qt Linguist that is going to allow you as the programmer to simply just write strings into your application using the TR function. Then later, the translator, who needs to know nothing about programming, can take those strings out of your application, translate them, and sort of pseudo-compile them into a binary blob. Qt also supports left-to-right layouts for both text and the application as a whole. So if you ran your application in Arabic, your widgets are actually going to flow right to left instead of left to right. Qt also has some very nice handling of plurals. So uh, you can say five files have been saved or one file has been saved. This is very important because handling of plurals varies quite a bit from language to language. So it is not entirely automatic. You as a programmer need to take some thought in how you write your application. The most important thing is that anywhere where a string is visible by the user, you need to wrap it in the TR function. This tells Qt that this is a string that is appropriate for translation. As opposed to other strings in your program that you might use as keys into a map or a hash, obviously you would not want those to change at runtime. So here's an example here where we have my widget sum function, and we have a label and we're setting its text in English to foobar. We wrap it in the TR function to tell Qt this is something appropriate for translation. And uh, when this is actually run by the user at runtime, that string could be something different than foobar. 
But you as a programmer, this is all you need to do to sort of set up your application to be able to be internationalized. Sometimes you may not have a QObject scope. You may be in some other class that does not inherit from QObject. Here you can use a static function from QCore application called translate. And translate actually takes two parameters. Not only does it take the string to translate, but it also takes what's called a scope. And here the scope we're calling it my widget. Strings that use the tr function automatically get a scope to the class name in which this uh, string appears. So for foobar, would automatically get a my widget scope. And that's going to help your translator determine where in the application this strain happens to come from. The actual process of internationalizing your program is very easy. While this particular graphic is very complete, uh, has all the ins and outs of everything that will go into the tools and come out of the tools, there is actually only four steps to internationalize in your program. You need to have the TR macro used inside of your code. And you need to run this tool called lUpdate. What lUpdate is going to do is it's going to take all of the strings that are wrapped by TR macros and then it's going to pull them into a translation file that ends in TS. So here in this example, we have lUpdate making an app underscore DE TS file. This will be our German translation. Now once you have this TS file, you can give that file and a program called Cute Linguist to a translator, somebody who is not a programmer but is very skilled in translating languages. They are going to edit the app.ts file so it not only has the strings that were wrapped in TR but a translation for each one of those strings. Then you as a developer are going to take that TS file and run lrelease. What lrelease does is it takes that TS file and sort of compiles it into binary code that will represent all of the strings in the application. That QM file can then be loaded at runtime using this class called QTranslator. So you can make these translator instances, you can load one of these QM files and then install it on your application. And you can actually install as many of these translations as you want. So you might break your application up such that you have a number of libraries and each library can have its own translation file. So let's take a moment to have a look at how this process actually works. We're going to take one of the cute examples and show you how it was translated. So this here is the actual code to the cute example called i18n. And it is a simple internationalized program that if you run it, we'll see that it prompts us for the languages we would like to see a dialogue in. And we're going to pick the uh, native, it was written in English to begin with. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, pick something with a right to left layout. And we'll pick something like Esperanto. And you'll notice that these applications generally look the same, except they have a different language for all of their strengths. And if you look at the one that has the right to left layout, you'll also notice that all of these strings and widgets are now laid out from left to right. Not only does the text flow from right to left, but so do the widgets. So we'll take a look at the code to see what the programmer has done. And here you will notice in the code that we use heavy use of this tr function. So when we make our Q radio buttons, um, here we start off with a native language, which is English for me, and we make radio buttons with, say, TR isometric or TR perspective. And you write your application with all the widgets and so on as usual. So once I'm done with that, I need to make sure that inside of my project file, that I have this new translations variable, which is going to take a number of file names, one for each language I want to translate into. 
So here you'll notice that we're doing a, um, a Japanese translation, we're doing an English translation, uh, we're doing a French translation. So you can have as many of these as you want. Now generally you can name them, the files, to whatever you want, but the standard naming convention is the name of your application underscore the locale. So once you have that in your project file, you can go ahead and run lupdate. And what lupdate does is it takes in the name of your project file and is going to read through all the source code of your project and pull out all the strings. And it's going to do its best to actually diff this TS file with uh, what you might have already saved. You can edit your app, run lupdate, add more strings to your app, and then run lupdate again. So we're going to run lupdate. And you'll notice that um, it runs through your application once for every language file you specified, which uh, in our case is a lot. We had a lot of translation files. Here we see that LUPDATE has found zero new strains and uh, 13 that already existed. So the output of LUPDATE are these TS files. And if we look in the translations directory, let's open up, let's say, the French version, and we'll look at what lupdate actually produces. And what we notice is that lupdate creates an XML file that has a source string and a translation string. Now, if you provided scopes and hints for the strings in the TR macro, they would appear here as well. Now, this is XML. It's human readable and human editable. But if your translator isn't an XML superhero, they're probably not going to want to edit this at, by hand. So now we'll go ahead and open the Linguist, which is the application the translator is going to use to edit this XML file. So we'll open the French translation. And we'll notice that Linguist is a very simple application. We have a list of scopes here on the left. We only have one class called main window, and it has 13 source texts to translate. So we have view, file, exit, and so on. It's very simple. So here we have view, and its source text in the actual application is view, but the translation from English is view in French. Now, you may notice these ampersands in file and exit. Now, in different languages, these may need to be changed, such as in exit in English, the general keyboard shortcut is control X. However, in uh, French, you would be control Q. Here, we move the ampersand to the Q, so that becomes the accelerator. So your translator goes ahead and takes all the source texts and enters in translations. They can save this file and then quit Linguist. Now your translator is going to give you back these completed TS files. And you can tell Qt to compile this XML into binary object code by running lrelease and giving it the name of the project file. And what happens is lrelease reads all of the TS files and generates a matching binary QM file. And we'll notice that we have in the translations directory one for each of the languages that we are translating to. Now inside of your application somewhere, you need to actually make an instance here of QTranslator and you want to load the file name of the QM file that you need. These QM files could be loaded off the disk, or they could be compiled in as resources, so they actually reside inside of your application binary. Then once you have the translator, you can then install that translator on the Q application. From then on, any strings inside of the main window class will be translated into the appropriate language. So those are the simple four steps to translate in an application in Qt. Now, Qt is ground up design principle of being easily internationalized. So because of this, there are classes inside of Qt that are locale aware, such as 
uh, reading in uh, doubles or dates. Uh, you'll notice here that we are setting our Q locale to be German. Then we can convert the string of 1, 2, 3, 4, comma, 5, 6, which is a valid floating point number from someone from Europe. You would use commas instead of a decimal point. And that would evaluate to true. If our locale was set to C, um, as in uh, English United States, then the to double function for QString is going to expect a decimal point and a comma would not be valid. Likewise, for QDate and QTime and QDate time, uh, when you actually print these out to the screen, they are formatted uh, correctly for the locale, so the month, day, and year are correctly ordered in such a manner of what your user is uh, expecting. Same thing with the date and time widgets. So if you use a QDate time widget, it's going to be correctly formatted for your user. You can translate the actual strings that are displayed, but you can also translate keyboard shortcuts. The key sequence class can take in a string that is a modifier plus a key. So control N here is the English shortcut, but your translator could change control N into something that is more language appropriate for your target language. Now, of course, when you use TR with something like control N, you're probably going to want to use the optional second parameter, which is a description as to what this string really means. And that is going to be helpful for your translator to know that control N opens, say, a new document. So this is the quick version of how Qt makes it easy to internationalize your programs, as long as you start in the mindset of wrapping all of your user visible strings in TR, your job as a programmer is pretty much done. I hope you've enjoyed this sample of the Qt Essentials training course. For the full experience, including labs, a live instructor, and much more, I suggest you attend a full multi-day Qt Essentials training course taught by either ICS or any of the Qt training partners. For further information, please visit Qt.Nokia.com. Thanks for watching.